Welcome, guys. It's the Undead Zone Show, a uh, talk show where we talk everything H1Z1. It is September 19th. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Space Mexican, your host. Let me introduce my co host, the lovely Ritus. Hello, right here. <laughs> and the, the, the uh, continuing sexy Laz. Hello, I'm right here. <laughs> and, and our special guest, we have Cabal, uh, who is a EVE Online player and an officer within H1Z1. Say hello, Cabal. Hi, Internet. <laughs> Hi, Internet. Hey, Invisible Man. <laughs> first guess, time Skyping, long was this time like, fan. Is this how you kind of visioned the your first Internet people rea- uh, you know, interaction going? That was, that uh, was cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'd always hoped. <laughs> I always hoped. Uh, well, if you guys are just uh, watching the, the Undead Zone, like sh- the uh, meta show, um, they had Jeff Edwards on there, which is a sci-fi awesome author and uh, last can you kind of just briefly talk about that experience that you had yeah he's really awesome like uh one of the probably the coolest thing that i got out of the entire uh ty- the entire show or the 30 minute segment with him was that one of his books that was his very first military uh, thriller book thriller book that he made was he was just writing 10 pages to uh to get his publisher off his back and then he ended up when he started writing, he ended up being there from ten pages to to sitting there for nineteen hours writing pages. So he, he like just get hooked, and I, was, I just found that like fascinating that he could really just start with so little and then get completely into it uh, and just keep going and writing and turning out pages. Yeah, Jeff. Jeff, I had a chance to talk with Jeff, and he's an amazing author. Um, I don't read, so unfortunately, um, I haven't read any of his books. Uh, it's, Bro, it's, it's audio book. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Audiobooks. audiobooks all, yeah, like, can you link that for me? Because that was actually, yeah. when, when they talked about I, I audiobooks, just, I was like, dude, I totally need to get those. A little known Audible fact, Audible. Laz can't read. So Yes. yes. He yeah. never well, I used to, Laz, my, you my can't read? Job, before, I start, before I start working TMC, I drove around all day. And you, he did. You, you, know, you can only listen to the same pop song, that popular song, like three times before it gets old. So I, I started listening to audiobooks, and I think I've probably listened to 50 or 60 books at this point. Wow. Wow. Uh, and it's and it's like because you work at your uh, at a desk most of the day, don't you? I work at a desk, but I'm also driving a lot, so it's actually yes. audiobooks would actually work. Like I could probably just yeah, do a so chapter every time I drive. You can you can download you can get, get go to Audible and subscribe to Audible, and okay. you, can, you can get like I think two two free books a month, and oh, wow. it, it just downloads straight wow. to your phone. And so you just if your phone connects to your uh, your car stereo, you listen to it that way, or uh, with headphones uh, at your desk. In, yeah, I, I hope my boss isn't listening. Um, I don't use the computer at all for personal use during work uh but if i did that would be a great idea uh well weren't you playing h1z1 the other day uh at work no no unfortunately um i my computer sucks so it will not i tried it already like almost max fried the the computer hard drive and the it guy was like were you doing anything like personal on the computer i'm like (laughs) absolutely not no Mm -hmm. he's like what's all this steam and like mumble stuff i'm like i don't know they had an intern using this computer before i got it Oh, good one. Well, I mean, because I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a recording on the YouTube channel of you playing at work and t- having a conversation. <laughs> I'm probably sure. If I, worked in a, if I worked in a very large corporate environment, I probably would have been fired by now just for using <laughs> my computer. Um, all right, guys. So we're just going to get into some Undead Zone uh, topics. And uh, right now, uh, this is Cabal. We call him a.k.a. Rock and Cabasa. That's not um, what they call me. <laughs> Cabal, why don't you why don't you go, go into a little bit for the viewers, kind of your background in Eve Online, you know who you kind of rolled with, your experience there, um, and I and I think you're actually you're you're not a goon, right? No, I am yeah. not. Yeah, it's uh, funny because they're always making fun of like you know if they make like a goon joke, and Cabal always, in, in comms he's always he's like, well, you know what? Actually, I'm not a goon, so that doesn't apply to me. So why don't you explain funny. your uh, your Eve background and then kind of get into what you do in in H1Z1. Well, um, playing Eve for a couple years and uh, started off, didn't really know what I was doing. I somehow ended up in a corporation whose uh, directive was when you, uh, when we got war deck to just hide, which was awful. <laughs> so I became a high sec station trader down in Jita for a while. I got so bored of that, I finally found wormholes, which was my, like, this is where I want to be in Eve. Praise Bob. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I flew around with Pro Patrol. They're awesome uh, guys. A lot of UK folks. Um, they're just a blast to hang out with, and I just shout out to all of them if they ever see this video. But uh, yeah, 
I was uh, day one, H1Z1 invasion, I joined. Um, I'd never flown with goons before, I'd never been a part of the CFC, now Imperium. And uh, I decided, hey, you know, I've been following the Matani for a while and they were doing this thing. So, here I am, <laughs> a couple months later. Nice, and, and uh, what, it, I, you're an officer in, in H1Z1, correct? Yes. And what is, uh, what is your role as an officer? Which officer are you, and, and what's your main role, and how do you achieve that? So I talk to a lot of uh, other groups, and I, I focus a lot on recruitment. Um, I'm trying to basically expand the numbers of the Imperium in the game, but a lot of that goes through uh, you know, other, uh, other groups. And basically what that means is that I get to I get act like a big shot but uh, don't really have to do a lot of work. <laughs> so what's really interesting is that Cabal tries to communicate, apparently, with people that don't speak English. Um, <laughs> it's something he's very highly trained at, um, and I, it's like, my job to instantly destroy those, those relationships. Uh, Cabal, actually, can you talk about that interaction you had? It was a Brazilian player, and it was a large Brazilian group, and, and Cabal was actually trying to uh, just really have peace talks with them, not really recruiting them, just kind of, hey, uh, if, we, uh, if you don't hang, you know, have a treaty with us, we're just going to come in and just blow everything up. And Cabal literally <laughs> used our streaming Twitch chat to talk with this guy, uh, so why don't you explain that kind of that, that whole that whole story real quick? All right, so obviously there's something of a language barrier. I do not speak Portuguese, and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of trying to rely on like Google Translate and sending messages back and forth as best as possible. Finally, I'm this guy mobile. hitting on us. <laughs> Your <Are we laughs> language. <laughs> <laughs> You know Google Translate, it just says all the wrong things. So yeah, that no, knows what you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> you get a, a completely different perception of what was going on. Um, so eventually we uh, we we got to this sort of this like communication point. And then in Mexican, is that when you came in and, and started shooting the place up? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. How did the story go from like this is what we were whoa, doing to, to, on, to Mexican on. shooting everybody? That, that's, you'd be surprised. Why are you call Mexican? That's, that's racist. Mexican shooting everybody. Yeah. Wow. It's not American like that's part of my name. Uh, yeah. you know, what was really funny was, was Cabal was actually, like, I didn't know he what he was doing. He was ongoing, like, a two-week, three-week dialogue and in, like, mm. slang Portuguese. Um, and I, we, we were talking in chat, and, and he goes, he goes, yeah, I'm trying to get, you know, these guys, I've been talking to them, like, I'm like, yeah, bro, I don't think that's going to work. He's like, why? I was like, because I've been actively going over there, like, just, like, killing them and talking shit, so... Oh, is it very... I'm probably which, undermining which all your work you're doing Are you guys right talking about the, uh... Are we talking about the BR group that uh, lived in DeSoto's? Uh, I think, they're, okay, I think okay. they're currently living in, uh, Cranberry right now. I oh, think are I've, they? I think I've seen a few of the their members. I don't know if they've, like, splintered or fractured or what, but... Yeah, it's, it, I found it very difficult to, um communicate with brazilians because i actually on my on my stream now i'm doing like this like how to be a puppy guy kind of story mode where i just join a server and i happened to join a server where it was a un a, a clan by the name of un and they were brazilian and the only thing i could d say that would kind of communicate to them so they didn't shoot me was <laughs> i said i love brazil number one brazil number one brazil number one and and he just repeated that back to me and like really bad english and like that was the only thing that we got along with i was um, shameless space mexican <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> shameless <laughs> i mean it was the only thing that I, I i didn't want him to kill me and it was like five of them and then like they took me through a city and then eventually like we met up with like 10 more of these guys and then all i could do was speak really loud brazil number one brazil number one and finally one, <laughs> some person just shot me probably for being annoying um and then that kind of i just recommended nobody communicate with people that don't speak your language it's probably not best in the game <laughs> yeah <laughs> not you know, to your general, health. <laughs> i'd say that's a good rule of thumb oh man okay guys so kind of getting into some general uh topics uh update uh for the news segment of the undead zone show uh we have the invitational i i I am saddened, but I don't think Lab yes. is going to get in. Um, no, they they invited sense. a couple more people that they said were in the waiting line of, you know, invitational part of it. Um, well, from, what, from what I was told, I was at the top, the very first in the waiting list. Uh, and, that was yeah. a lie. 
<laughs> yeah, apparently. apparently. I forgot who was the last guy that got invited. Uh, I can't remember who, but uh, uh, un- unfortunately, uh, no. I don't think anybody from from the Matani will be representing uh, in the Invitational uh, Sad tier. Um, but you know, there's always next year. Hopefully, if they do it next year. Uh, on the bright side, Laz is missing out on the prize of over 163,000. Uh, he will not um, be able to compete for that. Uh, you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was, it was on stream. Well, well here's the upside to it, Laz. I mean, really, next year it's probably going to be more. So you know, you're really yeah. looking at your baseline of how much you'll be competing for next year. Um, <laughs> so... I'm just really sad because I, I definitely think I could have, I could have won it. Like yeah. seeing, seeing the people in it, I, I definitely could have won it. Yeah, and I'm I'm definitely thinking if they saw any of your videos, they might have reached that conclusion as well. You know what? To be honest, <laughs> well, if I if I would have got in, all I would have really wanted to do was do some stupid like ramp jump, jump out of the car and like kill some famous streamer, uh, you know, shamelessly just to be like, yeah, they're just other, they're just gamers. I mean, they're, they're mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, Laz would have took like a, a a thousand shot arrow headshot through a truck or something. <laughs> oh, bro, <laughs> I was. I didn't get this on stream. I was so sad because I, I had the wrong scene selected, so my stream was showing black screen. But uh, I killed a guy with a bow in uh, in battle royale. Did you? I was yes. <laughs> I, yeah, he he had a he had a pistol, and uh, and I, I threw a Molotov at him. He he ran away from the Molotov and turned around and started shooting at me. I I, I one for one shot him in the face <laughs> with an arrow, and he he was just he was so mad. One voice, he was like, "What the fuck." You fucking hacker! <laughs> <laughs> you know what's fu- you know what's funny is we do uh, we have the uh, the Thunderdome now uh, on the server and uh, we've been actively getting puppies and we'll just make bets on stuff and so of course I always chose the puppy. Uh, don't I? Don't you owe me a Rasta backpack? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> so it was it was IMP kill you that always fought and so I would just kind of throw the rules out and there was a puppy and. I was like, okay. He's like, well, how does it work? I'm like, all right, here, you get a bow. Um, he had a crossbow, and it kill you, and kill you had a, a just a makeshift bow. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be good. Like, I'm totally gonna win this one after I lost one already. <laughs> and uh, he was like, how do I arm it? I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, bro, press. Put, pick Back up the, the arrows. Put, pick up the arrows. I was like, you have to get naked. He's like, but I can't take my shirt off. I'm like, you know what? Don't even worry about that. Just here. Just, you know, <laughs> you're, you're good. It. You're good. <laughs> and so what does this idiot do? What does he do when I say, okay, here we go. Start. What does he do? He runs that kill you straight on. Like uh, just straight oh, up runs at him. And I'm like, and, and he just like, he just one shots him in the head and just like cripples to the ground. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, how do you, like this, the, the one thing you don't do in a bow fight is go someone straight up. Like that's. No, all. no, you, 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 bunny, you bunny hop, wait for them to shoot. And as soon as they shoot, you, you, you stop and you shoot. And he had the and advantage. It's... He had a crossbow. He didn't even have to aim. Like he just pulled the trigger. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, it's, it's like Revolutionary War style yeah, fighting. I ended up losing. Uh, like, I ended like up chess. losing a, a backpack, a military <laughs> backpack, and a, and an AK-47. Um, so people, <laughs> I, I stopped betting, uh, and stopped, I, I at least stopped betting as the house. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, kind of going into some more uh, updated news, guys. I don't know if you've had a chance to play with the mechanics, but there was a big update on the 18th, which was yesterday. Yes. Um, I'm super excited about this update, and this is why. The the update is strictly cleaning up the response time on the game. And I know, Laz, you can feel for this and write us in oh the ball. Oh, my God. The, the oh, endless oh. clicking to pick up items is literally It, it was literally oh, yeah. better. Or to get like, out of your car. Right. Uh, two weeks ago, I, I played a ton of Battle Royale, and it, it was getting better. And uh, But the, the fact that they're still working on it is just, like, amazing news. Yeah, it was when I saw this update and I played a game. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank, thank God! Like it was a <laughs> massive update because it really showed so much, you know, um, so much growth in the game. The fact that there's so much stuff mm-hmm. built in PvP and well, you can instantly click stuff and and Battle Royale too. And, and well, part of the issue that they're running to is uh, is desync, and that that's, all that has to do with server load and uh, the, right. the items as well. So I think that should also clean up some of that. What, I, what I'm really excited about this is, and I hope that this is, we're going to see more of this going forward, is that they're focusing on a lot of the back of the house stuff. Like, it used to be for a very long time that they would focus on, like, a new feature, a new graphics, right. usually. 
uh, or new new in-game assets, and that's great, and that that's a lot of work, and it definitely adds to the game. But it was you could tell it was being dragged down by the fact that some of these issues that had cropped up in earlier builds just weren't being addressed, which I'm still looking forward to. But the fact that they've kind of put those to the side a little bit so they can focus on, you know, well, I think that's fun. why they put it aside. I don't think I don't they think did. the servers would have been able to handle it, honestly. I think because <laughs> it was getting so bad, like responsiveness wise. That I think if they expanded the map, they would just run into issues where they just, just it would, not, would not handle it. And hopefully, with these changes, they can also increase the number of players on the server. Yes, yes that, that would please. be absolutely fantastic. I, there's a lot of talk on Reddit about how <laughs> people want smaller servers. I don't understand this. I feel like in a sandbox game, the more people you have interacting together, the more interesting it becomes. Well, the map's too big already. I, it's too I, big I, for the I just, players. I just, he, they, Cabal agreed to the to the to the numbers of of the server, and Blaz is just like, no one listens to me. <laughs> what? I would make such I would make such a good DM designer, bro. <laughs> I, I, how I, many I, do you think I, there I agree should be? with you, though. Yeah, how many? How, how many? many? How many? Uh, with with the with the current map or with an expanded map? Uh, a current map. With the current map, uh, I think probably a good even a good number would. Probably double what it is now. Right. I agree. So I, I think that that is a good. Yeah. Uh, it's at two hundred. Five hundred. So I, I, it was, I would say I would say I would say four hundred. It was two fifty. It was two hundred. Yeah, is is at least last last time it was, it was whenever we did the invasion it was two hundred and I, they haven't changed it since. Yeah. And what uh, if they expanded the map to twice the size? Would twice you just the size. Double it. Twice the. Uh, I mean, yeah, for a starting point, that's. Because it really is, it would have to be a sliding scale. And they would have to do it and see what happens and, and do it or adjust it from there. Yeah. So why do they have such a low limit on the servers? Uh, because they can't handle it, honestly. I think it's just a coding issue with uh, too much load because you're looking at every single zombie. Well, it's why, it's why you don't see any zombies on high pop servers. Well, they all get right. killed. <laughs> well, no, no, they, they don't spawn. They don't spawn? Yeah. They, oh. They, well, like, if you, if you go to PV uh, on a high pop server... Uh, you see that there's no zombies there because uh, the server just doesn't spawn them. Well, I, I if you go, if you go, more of like an ecology thing. Mm -mm. La Laz, nope. La Laz is uh, Laz is, is playing uh, Minecraft right now. Okay, uh, I'm actually I'm actually playing <laughs> H1Z1 right now. Right. On the <laughs> and yeah. the stream uh, keeps lagging. Yeah, the stream keeps lagging for some reason. My my uh, KVS keeps dropping for some reason, even though I was. You, we're using really good internet, which is odd. Um, so we're just gonna let roll with it and and let people keep uh, complaining about it in chat, which I love. Um, but yeah, invite all your friends to come complain in chat too. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, I stopped the stream; it was going, but then the stream like click died. Um, so <laughs> the border. Uh -huh. Astro says he's running a phone line over the border. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emergency IT. Right. I'm gonna. So, quick question. Last, someone, someone. I don't know if you've used this, but uh, there's people that are drop shotting now. I don't know if it's like a bug or. They're what? So they're dropping, dropping to the ground. Prone. Quick drop. Uh -huh. Prone, and then they, they're standing up, and then I don't know if it's getting their their FPS better momentarily or what they're doing. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of players do this lately, and actually Spanx tried it the other day, and he killed like three people or two people in a row. Um, yeah. So you, you go prone, and then then you stand up and, and start shooting, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the the what that does is because of the way the gunplay in H one Z one works, and to be honest, gunplay in H one Z one isn't that good. Mm -hmm. Is go is right. you can easily dodge shots by either jumping or going prone. Uh, and I actually have video of myself fighting a 2v1 with an AK, and I kill the first guy, and uh, I go prone and pop back up for the uh, second guy because uh, he that's because he was in the middle of reloading when I first engaged. Uh -huh. So as I and the second guy takes longer to kill than I expected because of the angle I'm shooting at. Uh, so he hits me once or twice, and then I go prone and instantly pop back up, and I drill him with five rounds of AK in the chest. So I mean, it's all—all all the proning does is it—it it fucks with people's aim. And most people that you'll come against in any FPS, any FPS you ever play, is they have a tendency to over aim, and or they have their sensitivity too high. And whenever I'm teaching people how to play Counter Strike or I'm help, giving them tips on how to play Counter Strike, I, I, the first thing I do is show them is how to properly set their sensitivity. 
So that's that's honestly the biggest thing that that you have to worry about is people jumping in H1C1 or going prone, and that's going to cause you to over aim. So if they go prone and you shift your aim down uh, to hit them from going prone, they will instantly they instantly step stand back up, and you're having to re aim again. And that's and even like when when shooting long range in H1Z1, uh, you should always be strafing. You should be uh, shooting long range. You should be firing slow shots and strafing at the same time, forcing people at long range to have to aim. And that's why I suck at FPS games because Laz just wrote a three-page paragraph essay on how to properly prone and shoot. Cabal, did you well, get people, all those notes? People, people ask me a lot I, about, about stuff like I that. I was taking notes. I mean, you know me. We had our little duel. Um, you taught me the lesson. The crossbow, in fact, is not a terrible weapon. You know, well, my strategy, see, people think I'm actually a good FPS player, and I'm really not. I just try to use mathematics when it comes to it. So my strategy is I've always figured if I can shoot a certain amount of, a of bullets, then most li my, my, my ratio of, of, of my percentage of actually killing the guy is very high. So that's why, like, I just spray and pray because yeah, well, uh, I have way better odds of, of, uh, of killing the guy. That's kind of what I shoot for, too. Uh, I do want to bring up one thing that uh, I was kind of made aware of recently. There is a glitch at the dam that lets you get underneath down into, like, a, the floor of the world type of thing. Uh -huh. But you can still look up and snipe people inside the dam. Really? Yeah. You can do that under some bridges, too. The bridge on the south road. You just get into the bridge like and you shoot upwards. Glitch, like you can glitch inside the bridge? Right. Can you get out? Yes. Um, Sometimes. I I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of watching the video of the guy, whether or not he can get out. It yeah. Looks like I'm, it. it looks like he can get out, actually. I've actually hidden some rocks like that, too. And you, when you go to get out, it just sends you off into the nether world. And you die. The and you lose world? all your stuff. Are you saying Minecraft yeah. in H1Z1? <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I think they did a joint contract. But uh, you lose everything. You can't find so your you bag. Guys, guys, did you hear that? There's a bridge in the server in Dirty Deeds. It's the south bridge. There is an ender portal uh, in that bridge. And then you go in and, and then <laughs> Just you, bring your diamond you turn on. into H1Z1 Minecraft and it shoots you to the nether. Uh, confirmed here on the Undead Zone show with Raidus. Mine this is a thing. <laughs> this is happening. Oh, it's, it's happening right now. Uh, real quick, guys, we're, we're going to get into the... Uh, and M. Gargantua. Thank you for the follow, sir, so much. Uh, we're going to get into the PvP section. And really quick, I just want to talk about a big raid that happened um, last week. And unfortunately, it wasn't our raid uh, for once, which is great. We actually got raided. Uh, I wish everybody was here. Me too. Uh, that was there to, to, to witness this. But unfortunately, they used a hacker. Um, yeah, yeah. That that blows. You know, it every really, time I think really we've been raided, I think every time we've been raided, it's been with the assistance of a hacker. Well, it's very common for some of the larger right. groups to like right. reach out for well, <laughs> for big projects. And and here's the here's the thing, I I don't care about getting raided, and I don't care about getting our ass kicked, really, um, because that's part of the game. That's it, it's, yeah. it'd be yeah. great if we got raided by twenty guys, because it's like okay, we pissed off someone so mad, so bad mm -hmm. that they got 20 guys to come kill us whether they were part of the same group or not like it doesn't matter um the issue that i had with was that they had to bring a hacker with them and we confirmed it we got it recorded they were speed hacking all over the place um and they were really using the hacker to identify where everybody was because nobody could get any uh you know get close at all to where they were raiding uh they were only successfully able to 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 uh take down about 60 percent of one of our barracks which they didn't even get to any of the prime real estate rooms. Um, and what was what was seriously amazing about the community was it took us like 30 minutes to rebuild everything. I mean, 30 this, minutes. Yeah. Right. that was I mean, it. I could see that. I mean, everybody yeah. got online. It was all hands on deck. We had everybody just chipping in. I mean, it was really amazing what I saw and witnessed there, uh, which kind of talks about the strength of, of a community. Um, you know, and Laz, I, I, can you kind of talk about how strength of community and large communities help, like especially like games like EVE Online, where the numbers really matter. Well, in games like EVE and games like H1Z1 uh, in, the, in the survival uh, game type, uh, it's a huge, huge deal. Uh, 
I was the original leader of the H1C1 group, uh, and then it was passed off into uh, Spanx. But the biggest thing that we were always accused of hacking uh, is because we had so much material. We, we were able to put up six bases in the time that people right. were only able to get like to up <laughs> some walls. Yeah. So that's, it's, that's, it's, it's a big deal. And organization-wise, uh, that's, that's what we're known for Eve. And Eve, we're known for how organized we are. And uh, that's what we look to be bringing into H1Z1. Now, uh, you know, I, I was not a member of the Imperium and Eve, but I will say that the biggest advantage that you see in a game like H1Z1 is first of all prime real estate. You have enough people that you can actually hold some of the best locations on the map. And if you're just a group of friends, you, you can't do that. You're you're mostly concerned with like being far enough away that people don't notice you, as opposed to deciding where you want to be and then occupying that space. And then when you said a half an hour to rebuild a base, I yeah, absolutely, that's doable. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a finite amount of work that needs to be done, and if you can split that enough uh, uh, up um, among enough people, you can. You know, it's very light work. Almost every player in H one Z one is going to gather more resources than they need, uh, at least at the moment. So, if you have a system that can take advantage of that and really pool those to be able to do some pretty incredible things, uh, that's. One one of the one of the favorite things I've ever done in the game was I was responsible for punging up a lot of the dam. Um, I I started it as sort of a pet project, and then more people started contributing resources and and oh, actually placing yeah. it. And That's before right. you knew it, it just grew to this absolute monstrosity where basically there was only one yeah. way into the dam. You were you were the crackhead punji stick guy. <laughs> yeah, That's no, right. for a while there, I was running around gathering sticks. But, I, I, I know, remember having so much lag because it was like fields of loading of punji sticks. Like I, it couldn't, it couldn't even, my computer couldn't used, even load we used them. To, we used to, we used to run puppies across it and take that somewhere or not they'd survive. Oh and God. after a while, it just no one would take the money because they'd all die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. It was just, <laughs> uh, but you know. One board player in another group, a small or medium-sized group, can, can do something pretty cool. But when you apply that to a larger scale and you know you get that, that one goon who decides that they're going to do something truly, truly goonish, you can do it. You have the resources and you have the, the planning that, that can make that happen. And the leadership, I, I just real shout out to Spanx uh, and, and his entire crew. Uh, McLeod and Scooty. The bases are amazing. Yeah, yes. right. You were you were um, online. Uh, was it last night? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did you, you think? Uh, what do you think of everything? And, and there's quite a bit of difficulty getting on a base, especially if you don't have the way memorized. Uh huh. Um, and it's dark. Um, other than that, I oh, I don't want to give away too many of our secrets, but. Um, it's okay. We already have like five spies yeah. in the group. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Half well, of all goons are spies. They, I love the drop. I love the, the drop holes. I, I love the sniping spots. I love the locations. It makes it easy to um, pinpoint. You know, if there's hostiles running around. Um, and one other thing I wanted to mention about those punji sticks. Uh -huh. Lori had a pet deer last night. And she kept saying, deer? nobody shoot the deer, nobody shoot the deer. Yeah, it was our pet deer at your teeth. <laughs> and I'm standing there, and the deer just died next to me on some punchy sticks. So oh, I just look, yeah. I'm not going to mention it. Oops. Yeah, yep. that, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, every time no, someone you get says don't deer. touch or don't <laughs> shoot or don't. it's the same deer. <laughs> right. It's the worst thing ever. Um, um, oh. I wanted to say, too, that uh, we had some hassle activity last night, and uh, pretty normal people came up in a Jeep. Um, but they had a hacker with them, which made me think of that. And everybody reported him. And within, oh, 15 minutes, he was banned. The control R feature is really yeah, it stepped is. up. It really is. Of, of banning. You know, it and, was bad. Okay. And you would think people would just play the game. They're not. They're just trying to get smarter at cheating. Yeah, I don't well, understand I mean, that. <laughs> that's, that's just people going to be people. <laughs> right, right. But it kind of makes the game um, boring. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the hackers arrive. I don't know. I don't know what they get out of it. It's yeah. like when you take away all of the difficulty. What's right? Left? Like you <laughs> don't have to search game. for anything. You don't have to search for anyone. You don't have to go anywhere because you can teleport or fly. Right. And uh, like, you don't. And, and that's why they do what, what they do because it's kind of like you know what you beat the game. 
so what's left to do? Oh, let's go. Let's terrorize people. Like that's the only thing I can do. Right. Okay. No, I, I is... can actually get behind that motivation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, psychologically, I but... think that's, the, that's where they're going because it's like, okay, I can get any ammo I want. I can take anybody's stuff I want. What's the only thing I can do left? Oh, well, I can, if, I can only if terrorize. They keep people. making accounts, so they keep spending what twenty bucks, twenty bucks, twenty bucks. Yeah, dude, Laz already has like fifteen accounts. You know, every time, every time I see oh, one hi, of those Battle band King. accounts, I just think <laughs> cha-ching. You know, it's just there's another there's another bit of free money for these developers, and I think sometimes we do lose sight of the fact that this is still an alpha game, and uh, you know, it is still very much a work in progress, and. Uh. We, we tend to, I think, sometimes focus too much on where it is and, and not really, you know, look at the direction, sort of the momentum and where it's carrying. So, so based on that, Laz, when, when is going to be your next arrival time to H1Z1 PvP? Uh, next time I'm playing survival? Uh, I don't know. My, my biggest problem with survival is, uh, is it needs more depth to it. And... And I think even though they're working on the the dense, like the server latency and yeah, all yeah. the uh, all the server load stuff, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, I, I I want to see more content added uh, to to the survival side. I want what I want to see for them to do is to give a reason for me to go to certain places. Like, like put put specific like, so, like the basic the basic way for that to work would be uh, say you can only get this certain backpack or this certain item from this this X spot so so that would, that way people are all always going there and you can always know that you can find content in that area uh-huh. but right so now there, you can kind of find things everywhere there, you know what we need more people locations. you know what I, I i would just have to slight, <laughs> sorry Cabal. Slight, slightly no, no. slightly just disagree with that and only because it's kind of like we're we're at in dirty deeds. Like, yeah, it's a big fertilizer farm. Yeah, you can find fertilizer anywhere, but they don't have a lot of sugar, which we're using sugar right now to mass produce ethanol. So we actually have guys going out to cities to gather sugar. Like that's the only reason why they're going. Um, but I agree with you for the most part. I mean, the, scrap metal you can get that anywhere. Metal you can get that anywhere. Fertilizer for the most part, everything you can get. But there are areas that are concentrated with mass producing those items. Um, and I mean, the only thing that really people have to come to our territory to get something is if they have a worn letter, like to cash in the worn letter. That's like really the only reason why they need to come down to our well, area. Right. I think it comes down to we want more people per server and we want uh, little factions set up. So we are raiding each other all the time. You know, when there's only 200 people is the limit. We can't have those camps. So, right. So- and those different battles. Part, part of this is, is working. The, the, the developers published a Reddit post not too long ago, and they were talking about what they were going to include at least they were shooting by for November. So, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But they're talking about increasing the sort of the polish level. So exploring terrain, there's more stuff to see. Like um, There are basically three locations on the map, Laz, that have unique loot, and that is the dam, uh, the police station, and the fire station. And those are the only locations that you can get military backpacks, which practically every group needs. So I agree with you. If there were more items like that that were useful but could only be found in a very small number right. of locations, right. that would motivate you to, right. to go outside your territory yep. more often. Like one of the um, things I would want to see is like a like a spawn where you can get seven six two ammo or two two three ammo. Like, because okay. right now you 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 run around finding pistol ammo and then you convert it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if exactly. they if they like uh say you have a a gun store like in the center of the map uh like in G G four or something, and you have a gun store and they just like there's a spawn there that drops thirty rounds of two two three. Damn. Yeah. Or, or I mean, even that's... fifteen rounds of two two three. So something just kind of a mass produced like like a gun, a, a gun like if there was store. a gun store. Yeah, and that it's would like be the only great, place you can go to get location. like like ten fifteen rounds of it. ammo at a time. If so, only we had an armored vehicle, we could have a traveling gun store. <laughs> that's vehicle modifications are definitely on my wish list. Like, that, w- that would be I, pretty crazy though. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. an I armored vehicle, and the only up. way to to take it out is like a landmine. Well, uh, several. It would have to be several. <laughs> several landmines. So, uh, Astronostic said H1Z1 race wars. <laughs> what do you, what do you mean like? This is your first race war. Sorry, that's a Rick and Morty reference for, for anyone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> well, we are going to see the hospital. I mean, they've released a lot of assets of it. 
it's on the test server right now, so that's new. That's the first significant new thing added since really the invasion. Right. Um, you know the, where they they polished up a. a well, they, I mean they have they have the military uh, compound. I mean the only thing you can really uh, get there is, is tactical vests and some yeah. <laughs> Um There's I'm surprised there the, you know kind of like Laz says you would think that that would be an area where you get like two two three ammo, you know just massive amounts of AR ammo because it is a military uh, compound site. I don't know if they're going to add that eventually and people are going to start building around it, um, but. I mean, for the most part, they haven't add, added much, and they already said they're going to change actually the map layout, so to speak. So um, we don't know what that's what that's going to do to the map. They said they're definitely not going to expand it. Um, I I do would I would like more people because you just don't have enough people in the in the in the in the outskirt areas uh, that aren't the main cities. Uh, and I think that would change the dynamics of the game. I mean, if there was four hundred people in that in that server, I mean, that would be that would be I'd, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Um, especially with current current clans and you know and we like we could fight over resources or resourceful yeah. resource locations that a would be clan, great they are talking about a clan system and for me there are basically two things i would want to see in that one is just you can join this group and then you are automatically like highlighted as being as such so you don't have to worry as much about this whole like rolling group thing that we do right now uh-huh. And then the other is uh, the opposite of that, where you can actually declare war in another group. Like, if you can introduce some group-on-group content where you can actually, like, start interacting with other people in a more structured way, you're going to see groups start to evolve in complexity. See, I I expected something different from your number two. From from his number two, I was expecting uh, to have where if you're in the clan, you'll have to enter passcodes for doors. (laughs) <laughs> that would be that would be fantastic too, but See, I, you yeah. know, I have to keep my ambitions quite humble. <laughs> I have to shoot low. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, shout out to it's Fritzy. Come to Cran, meaning Cranberry. We will show you a good time. Nice. Uh, ooh, I don't know yeah, what you're talking about. Good time there, Fritz. Us a good time last time. Oh man. Yeah, uh, yeah Cranberry is definitely a high pop area. And actually, real quick before we have to cut out of here. Um, which kind of brings up a, a topic I wanted to get Laz's input on, which was um, the difference between playing in an active environment versus a slightly non-active environment, um, you know, from when we went from the dam to PV to the outskirts area. Um, do you find it harder to manage a, a large group when you're in a high activity area? Uh Versus being out in an in, a, in an open territory. Uh, no, it, it depends on it depends on the uh, players. Uh, it depends like uh, we whenever we were in the high active activity areas, a lot of our guys were just learning how to play FPSs. Mm-hmm. So I was like it, a lot of time it was me or one or two other people uh, trying to kill the other players so that we could so that our other guys could farm, and then uh, as people will get more and more used to FPSs and how they work and being situational aware and getting better with, with how to aim and shoot and all that, right, right. it got easier. So, I mean, if you have a group, uh, like a, a large group of people who know how to play FPS and are uh-huh. good at FPS, uh-huh. uh, then it's it's easy. It, it's super easy and it's the best place for you to be. Uh, but for a group trying to build up and, and figure out the game and stuff like that, then it's you're going to be an open environment. Okay, and what do you think, Redis? Um, I'll pass on that one. I, I really agree with what Laz is saying. That's not fair. I know. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to try to say it a different way. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think, Cabal? Uh, you've been, you've uh, been around for a, for a while. What's your what's your uh, view on it? Um, I think Laz. I think Laz brought up basically the point of like the group of, of individuals. I think that for certain more quote unquote elite groups, you're gonna have an easier time. But it, it has to do with the management of information. It has to do with how many potential targets you have at any given time and where people whether or not people are aware of their surroundings and what they need to be doing. And so if you're in a more open environment, that's much simpler. You have fewer targets, mm-hmm. you have more time to adapt and to react. If you're in a more chaotic environment with more, you know, more action you either need a good way of compartmentalizing that among the group so that people aren't overwhelmed with superfluous information, or you need people that don't need to communicate very much at all in order to be able to do the job. 
What what I what I saw in the beginning, which kind of I call it the the, the butterfly problem, um, which is when labs would need large amounts of materials, and people would go out. But because it was such a high activity area, like every forty five seconds there was a puppy to shoot. Well, this is Guys, before the chef. The, player, the players were were with the puppies like butterflies. It's like you're getting metal, and it's like ooh, butterfly. And it was like it took yeah. so long to get stuff back because <laughs> there was so much activity going on. Because I see it even now, like you know, people have there's nobody around, so they're actively working, uh, you know, doing their thing. And then a puppy shows up, and it's like okay, all activities stop. Everybody go kill the one puppy that's running through the valley, uh, <laughs> you know, and then activity uh, resumes. I kind of oh. saw that in PV, too. It was like every 35 <laughs> seconds. It was like, okay, who has the scrap? Well, I have like 10 puppies to kill. I don't know what I don't know what you want me to do, man. Like, well, you know, I think metal, that's probably metal. I think that has a lot to do with goon bloodlust. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the prospect oh. of, of, you know, that was more. They needed someone to be there to tell them what to do. Uh, and that's with any game. Most right. people in any game you play, they are there to be lazy. Like they they will they will do they will help <laughs> they, they, they are more it. than <laughs> they are more than happy to do what you tell them to, but they will not take the initiative. And like that's just, that's you know why what? just like real life and work. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> it happens in video games too. I need you to tell yeah. me exactly what to do and how to do it. Well, and that's that's why FCs are so important and like in, in evil life. You need someone to go out there and, and to lead that fleet and give people direction. Right, right. Um, and on that note, guys, uh, it's, it's the end of our show. I want to thank you for being here. Sorry for the internet problems. Laz, Laz got to speak with Jeff Edwards. Shout out to Jeff Edwards uh, on the Meta Show. Uh, you'll see more of him coming soon. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Daybreak, uh, Blue Yeti Mike, Razor uh, Headphones, uh, for the headphones, uh, the, the mice, and the uh, keyboards, which my keyboard's a little too big to pick up, but I'll pick it up. And it's like nice, pretty, pretty lights. Uh, I can't, I can't do too much with it. This is like the best I can do. That's it. That's like my my massive design of lights. Uh, but want to thank them for for sponsoring that, guys. Uh, and make sure you guys check out the boat show coming up next. Boat uh, the boat show. What, Laz, you know what he who he has on or what he's doing? Uh, I have no idea. Nobody but, ever uh, knows what that guy's doing. It's like a mystery. He doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he doesn't know. What he, he doesn't <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, it's very. But I, I'm I'm also playing horror games tonight again. Yes, at, and guys, uh, check out Laz today, eight o'clock. That's East, Eastern time. Yeah. EST nah. guys, check out that. It's uh, or five o'clock PST, uh, and if you're in the middle, you can figure it out. Uh, but check out last today. He's gonna shit his pants while he gets scared by cockroaches and and zombies. I've always or wanted something. to see last shit his pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, On camera. <laughs> we want to thank Cabal for coming out. Thank you so much, Cabal. We really appreciate it. Was my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, for thanks for being on um, and thanks, adding to the conversation, guys. Uh, make sure you check out H1Z1. And we are out of here. We'll see you next Saturday, guys. Stick around for the boat show coming up. The boat show. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.